The future of economic leadership is a scene, specifically countries like Indonesia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. In recent years, this trio has proved that they'll take economic power away from EU nations. In this four-part video series, we'll go over how these three nations have been and will be formidable competitors on the global stage. This is the first part of the series where we'll examine the specific means by which these nations have the potential to overtake the European nations in terms of economic strength. So stay tuned to the very end and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos. Now let's get into it. With over $3 trillion in GDP and 650 million people calling the region home, Southeast Asia is both diverse and dynamic. Factors including the demographics dividend, digitization, urbanization, trade integration, and infrastructure development have been propelling the region's fast economic growth in the past few years. In recent years, the ASEAN region has frequently been dubbed a rival to the European Union. When it was first created in 1967, ASEAN's principal objective was to foster regional stability, social advancement, and economic growth and since then, it has achieved its goal and much more. Among the ASEAN nations, Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines have shown the most promise and have been among the fastest growing economies in the world. Young people are a symbol of the future of our economy since they are full of ideas, flexible, and capable of rapid change. And this is where you start to see how ASEAN nations exceeded the Europeans. Large and youthful populations, plenty of natural resources, advantageous locations, and growing home markets are a few of the things that all three nations have in common. Distinct political systems, economic frameworks, and development objectives are among their other distinguishing characteristics. And thanks to recent developments in these countries, they've become a magnet for foreign investments, especially from China, Singapore, Japan, the US, and Taiwan. When it comes to ASEAN economies, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Vietnam are currently leading the pack. Each of these countries has its own advantages and disadvantages, but overall, they have all proved to be promising. These nations present enormous domestic marketplaces that are full of people who can buy a wide range of goods and services. Economic Background and Challenges as three of the most important ASEAN economies, Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines each have their own unique characteristics in terms of population, GDP, economic growth, trade agreements, and difficulties. They have a combined population of 487 million, which is about 39 million more than EU states. But there's a huge disparity in terms of population among the ASEAN nations. With a population of 270 million in 2022 and a GDP of $1.3 trillion, Indonesia boasts the biggest economy among the three, while the Philippines holds the title of the second biggest with a population of 118 million in 2024 and a GDP of $435.67 billion in 2023. In contrast, Vietnam has a relatively small population of 99 million, but the country has still managed to reach a GDP of $366.1 billion, and with a growth rate of 8%, it was the fastest growing economy in the region in 2022. That was largely thanks to fiscal reforms, a solid export sector, and successful COVID-19 containment. ASEAN nations have a combined GDP of about $3.6 trillion, which is leagues behind the EU's $15 trillion. But GDP isn't the only factor that determines growth. As European nations continue to grow at 2% per year on average, ASEAN nations are enjoying 5% growth per year. If this trend continues, the ASEAN nations will overtake the EU within 15 years. And that seems to be the case, because despite suffering a hit from COVID-19, the Philippines' economy recovered and grew 7.6% in 2022, and analysts predict it will expand 5.9% in 2024, which is really impressive for an island nation. And among these three, Indonesia has enjoyed the most stable growth. In the last 10 years, Indonesia's economy has grown at a pace of 5% annually, propelled mostly by strong consumer spending and the large population that it hosts. And the reason is quite simple. Indonesia is a signatory to several trade pacts, both regional and bilateral, including those with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. 
and with other big economies. But the other two countries aren't too far behind in their trade agreements. Both Vietnam and the Philippines have strong trade deals with countries like China, Japan and the European Union. But to continue this trend of growth, these countries must continue to invest in their people, infrastructure and global presence. Strategic Location While all three countries have good geographic positions in their own rights, it's their individual traits that have helped these ASEAN nations play out internationally. The biggest advantage these countries have is their shipping routes. More than half of the world's shipping passes through the Philippines and Indonesian waterways every year because the countries are located at the intersection of the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean and the Malacca Straits, making these countries the bridge between Asia and the rest of the world. And considering how close the Philippines and Vietnam are to countries like Japan and China, they've played a big role in ASEAN nations' global reputations. Moreover, Indonesia is expected to have one of the world's largest economies, possibly a part of the G7 by 2030, which will bring more prosperity to the ASEAN nations. Speaking of which, Indonesia is already actively involved in representing developing world issues as the sole G20 member among ASEAN nations. Additionally, these countries have served as commercial hubs due to their location, many harbors and extensive inland waterways. This has helped the ASEAN nations' economies grow steadily for more than a decade, despite a complicated past characterized by colonization and internal struggles. And thanks to the growing population of young people in the workforce, this trend will continue for decades to come. In contrast, the European nations are witnessing the opposite trend, with many of the economic superpowers seeing increasingly slowed economic growth and a decline of youth in their workforce. But what really sets the ASEAN nations apart is their competitive business climate, thanks to which global investors are drawn to these nations of young populations and rich biodiversity. As a result, these countries have become magnets for foreign investments, which has boosted the growth of the ASEAN bloc and made it the next potential superpower. Foreign Direct Investments Getting foreign investments has been a major goal for these countries. And for that very reason, governments have taken much-needed initiatives to improve their country's business climate to attract foreign direct investment or FDI. Some countries have even started programs to accelerate foreign and local investments. For example, Indonesia, in collaboration with the World Bank Group's Improving Business Environment for Prosperity, or IBEP, established a program called Indonesia's Investment Coordinating Board, or BKPM, to help them achieve their goals. These boards target industries like renewable energy, and to facilitate strategic investments, the government is concentrating on infrastructure, tourism and manufacturing, among other priority areas, by simplifying procedures and offering incentives. And from the looks of it, they've been able to achieve their goals. Major investors from all around the globe have invested heavily in these countries, which has in return helped the ASEAN bloc grow exponentially since 2010. But what sets them apart is their unanimosity, as the ASEAN nations have been able to keep internal conflicts away from their bloc, ensuring stable relationships and continued economic growth. Not only have the ASEAN countries benefited from this harmony, but several other countries like the UK, China, US, Singapore, Japan and more have as well, thanks to their investments in these countries. Vietnam alone achieved an impressive $15.27 billion in FDI in 2021, thanks to the country's impressive 8% economic growth. Indonesia and the Philippines bring in more investments to the bloc, thanks to their natural resources and young English-speaking workforce. Foreign investments have been a crucial part of economic growth for the ASEAN countries, and slowly these nations are overtaking many global industries. The textile industry is a great example of that. In the first half of 2022, Vietnam's textile and garment product exports exceeded even Bangladesh's. Exports of textile and sewing items brought in $13.18 billion for Vietnam during this period while exports of ready-made garment products brought in $11.92 billion for Bangladesh. When other countries were struggling with the pandemic and many industries were closed, the ASEAN nations continued to see stable growth. The Philippines did take a huge hit because of the pandemic, but it was able to recover rather quickly. 
For comparison, when the pandemic caused factories to close and exports to drop significantly in Bangladesh, Vietnam effectively dealt with it by implementing measures like border closures, increased testing, and lockdowns to stop the virus's spread. Vietnam was also ranked the world's number two exporter of RMG, or ready-made garments, according to the World Trade Organization. So it's clear that ASEAN countries show that their governments are attempting to make doing business easier and more appealing to outside investors. And FDI has boosted the economies of many countries because of their distinct advantages and important industries. The US-China Conflict World trade was taken by storm when tensions started to grow between the US and China. As the US continued to discourage or straight up ban Chinese products and its companies from having any sort of trading deals, many companies were left to find alternatives if they wished to run their businesses in the large US economy. But luckily for them, they didn't have to move very far from China in search of alternatives. Many investors moved their production out of China and into countries like the Philippines, Indonesia, and Vietnam to dodge tariffs and get into the US market because of the trade tensions between the US and China. Because of this, these nations have seen rapid rise in FDI, or foreign direct investment, which has boosted their economies. As an example, the Philippines has gained foreign direct investment from Chinese companies seeking to move their production facilities abroad as a result of the trade war between the US and China. Additionally, the country's exports to the US have exponentially grown, contributing to economic growth. So it's clear that the trade war between the US and China has been exceptionally good for the ASEAN nations, luring foreign investment from businesses planning to move their factories out of China. But what do you think? Will any of these nations bloom into the next superpower, or is it just hype? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos from this series.